All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. If some of you have been here before, and I'm welcoming, we had a lot of, I think, some newer people for this uh, workshop. So I'm excited to have you guys uh, here. So like Rachel mentioned, um, this is Crafty Adults, where we have fun and we make stuff. And today we're going to make a rainbow keychain, um, which is a little bit of a hybrid project. I've seen um, some people do it online. Um, and I kind of took a look at some of the tutorials that were out there and then kind of zhuzhed it and made it a little bit of my own um, kind of spin on it. So I'm excited to be here with you all to get this rainbow keychain uh, created. So I'm going to switch over my view here to my workstation and then we're going to talk about supplies um, and then we're going to actually get creating here. Um, during the webinar, like Rachel said, just ask any questions you have through chat, or if you want to raise your hand, we'd happily welcome hearing some uh, unfamiliar voices in this webinar. We don't get a lot of people doing that, so we'd love to hear your voice if you'd like to, um, if you'd like to ask a question. Let's get my view switched over here. Okay, hopefully everybody can see my workstation now. We are good to go. Okay, wonderful. So what we're going to go over first is supplies. So I'm hoping most of you were able to get a supply kit from the library. And if you were not, uh, and you're using some of your own supplies, this will give you a chance to kind of see what we've gathered here today and kind of pull some things from your own stash. Um, so what we're going to do here, I'm just going to kind of open up my own kit here and go through everything that we've got. So everyone should have some cotton rope. This is five millimeter cotton rope. You could do bigger, you could do smaller. It will just affect the size of your keychain. You're also going to want some yarn. So if you were at home, you could obviously use just big skeins of yarn and pull off whatever amount needed. Now, since we made these kits, you all just have a little um, pile of different colors. So for your keychains, the ones we're making today have three different colors. Um, you could make you could make as big of a rainbow as you wanted um, for any that you want to make after this. Um, just note that three, I think, is like the minimum. Two would be kind of sad, um, and four would be nice, but we just chose to go with three for this craft today. Um, so you'll need at least three different colors. So here's where you can kind of think about um, what colors you'd like to use. Everyone has enough supplies to make two keychains this evening. Um, so kind of think about that when you're pulling pulling the yarn off. This sh These bundles should be enough to do one row. Um, you may have a little extra to do um, more than one of these rows, but I don't know that you have enough to do two. So just keep that in mind. So you should have some yarn. The other thing you should have is a Ziploc bag that has some hardware in it. So again, since you have enough to make two, you should have two of each of these things. We did a gold and we did a silver. So you should have a silver um, actual, I, I don't even know what this is called, a keychain here, one of these rings, and then a smaller jump ring. Let me get the rest of mine out. And same thing with the gold. You should have the same exact things only in a gold variety. So again, think about that when you're planning which one you'd like to be silver, which one you'd like to be gold. Maybe you want to do cool colors with silver and warm with gold or switch it around, however you'd like to do it. The other thing you should have is a little template. So this is going to be the template that we're using to create the backing for our rainbow. So all of these um, keychains to show you they have a back to them. So again, if you're doing this from home, you could use whatever color felt you want, but you're, you're going to want to have a backing to secure it. And that brings us to our next supply. We should all have a piece of felt. Um, your felt is all going to be kind of different sizes, but it's going to be perfect for fitting your rainbow template in here. Okay, so that's all the things that you should have in your kit from the library, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think I've missed anything. Other things that you'll need tonight, scissors, pliers would be, uh, you could get away without them, but I would recommend, um, I put on here jewelry or needle nose pliers. These are actually neither of those things, but I misplaced 
both my jewelry pliers and my needle nose pliers. So this is what we got tonight. So again, just showing you any kind of pliers really will do the trick. Um, last thing, oh, not quite last. Other thing you're gonna need is a ruler. Um, again, you could get away without the ruler, but if you wanna get your rope in the perfect, uh, the perfect um, length, you're gonna want to have one of these. Okay, final hot ticket item is you're gonna wanna have a hot glue gun. Now, if you don't have one of these, that's fine. If you attended our scrunchie workshop, um, everyone actually got fabric glue and I did test it and the fabric glue does work just fine for this project. The only thing I will say, this looks a little weird, so I'm sorry, but the backing of the fabric glue, it just ends up getting like collects the lint and stuff. So I don't recommend this one. Um, if you're gonna, I had this carrying around on my bag and it just kind of got a little nasty on the back. The hot glue ended up being much better. You can see it doesn't collect lint or anything. So I'd recommend hot glue if you have it. So at this time, if you've never used a hot glue gun before, um, you do want to plug them in so they can warm up. Um, the tip of these glue guns gets very hot. So if you've never used one before, fair warning, um, you do want to be careful. You don't want to touch the tip. Obviously, mine's not plugged in, so it's fine. Um, I'm seeing some chats come in. We'll, we'll get to those in just a second here. Um, so anyway, for your hot glue gun, just be mindful wherever you plug it in right now um, that you don't get too close and touch the tip of this gun. So I'm gonna plug mine in right now and I'm gonna step away for a second because my outlet's kind of underneath my desk here. So Rachel, do you mind reading what our uh, question yeah. was that came through? Yep, I was just gonna grab that for you. So the question, we have a couple of questions. First question is, are we only cutting fabric and rope and yarn? Um, just wondering if I can use my fabric scissors or if I should grab another pair. You should grab another pair because you are going to have to cut out the paper template. Thank you. And then the second question is, um, how soon we'll have access to the recording? Um, that's usually within within a week, right? Is usually what within a week. Try to do. Yeah, usually within a week is what we shoot for. Um, I will say sometimes it's longer just based on things that happen. So we shoot for a week and all of you will get an email when the recording um, is live on YouTube. So you will get a notification when it's ready. And Megan, and I, just so you know, it looks like you said you hopped in late. So far, we've just gone over the supply list. So you haven't missed too much. Yes. And, and please feel free to ask questions throughout this. Uh, throughout this workshop. Um, we're going to be repeating some of the same steps, so I do think anyone uh, who continues to join late, um, they should be fine. So let me regroup here for a second and figure out what our first move is going to be here. Okay, I think what we want to do first is grab our ruler and grab our rope. So I kind of followed a couple different tutorials to kind of figure out what size, um, what size worked best uh, for me. And what I liked doing, we're gonna make uh, one about this size here. So of course I have one, I could, once you make your first one, you could just measure based on the one that you have. Um, but we're not gonna do that to start because obviously none of you have that at home. So we're just going to get started here and we're going to do one that is, we're going to start with our biggest rope here. And actually, I'm going to take a look. I think we're actually going to make one that's more a smaller size this evening, just because I want to make sure everybody's got enough rope here. Yeah, that's the size that I intended. I'm sorry. So we're going to take your ruler and then you're going to take your rope. Give her, you can have a little bit of play here, but you want to kind of hold it at the end. And then we're going to measure. You can see here, I can pull my rope tight. Don't, don't do that. You can have it be pretty loose on here. And then we're going to measure it at about seven and a quarter, anywhere between seven and a quarter and about seven and a half inches. So for me, that's, I'm going to say it's about right here. I'm going to do a little a little closer to seven and a half, just to give myself a little extra. And then I'm gonna cut. And again, y'all have enough to make two keychains. So 
Um, nobody panic if yours is a little off. It's, it's all going to be great. So your first one's going to be about seven and a half. And Rachel, you can add those. Um, why don't you add these measurements into the chat for folks in case they miss uh, what I've said? You got it. So anywhere between seven and a quarter and seven and a half. And then our second rope, so this will be for our middle piece of our rainbow, is going to be about six and a half. So for me, that's just about here. And you'll see here, once they kind of take shape, they're a lot closer to um, being even than if you were to just cut them all the same length and then kind of, you know, try to figure out where to cut them. It's, it's nice just to get it out of the way at the beginning. And our last one's going to be five and a half. So this one's going to be a little baby. So for me, it's about here. So that's where we're going to start. You're more than welcome to, um, obviously, you'll have some extra rope here. You're more than welcome to go ahead and just cut two of all of these if you'd like to make room for your second keychain. I'll leave that up to you. I'm going to, I think, just stick with my three for now. So in some of my examples, I did some different colorways, so I kind of tried to have fun and not do a traditional like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. I thought it would be fun to give you a little bit of a, a, a some freedom to pick your colors. So I think for this one today, I'm going to do, you can kind of mess around with it. Kind of thinking, I don't know, I'm trying to think of my two color combos. I'd love to hear what everyone is going to do for their first color combination. If they want to add it in the chat, I think that'd be fun to hear what everybody's planning on. I'm kind of thinking I might try to do green, blue, orange, which is a little bit maybe unexpected. I'm not sure. I'm usually a warm colors kind of person. Personally, I'm usually like yellow all the way. I'm wearing a head-to-toe yellow outfit today, but I think I got to go for the blue and the green. Well, those colors look so nice together. That blue is so pretty. I really like the blue. Oh, yeah, we've got a couple of, uh, someone's doing red, blue, and gold. Love it. Another one, light pink, turquoise, and red. I bet Ooh. that'll be pretty too. Yeah, I'm thinking about that. Oh, I like yeah, that Yeah, that lot. is nice. Mm, cool. And then blue, yellow, and pink for another one. That was what I was kind of thinking of doing at first. Okay. So again, now you are going to decide, and you can kind of see these two rainbows are based on the same concept, but they're a little bit different. So obviously this one, not a lot of space here. This one is more malleable and there's definitely some space here. So you, you've got options. You can kind of make this tutorial your own. I'm going to start with the largest. Actually, I, I don't think so. I'm going to start with the smallest one. And I'm going to do, I'm thinking about which colors I want to be where. I like the blue and the orange next to each other. And I'm not even an Illini fan. Yeah, I think I'm going to do orange as the smallest. So you're going to grab whatever yarn you're going to do for your smallest rope. Um, and then I think someone's asking about the sizes for the uh, rope. Um, and Rachel did put that in the chat, but for the largest one, seven and a quarter to seven and a half. And then you're going to want six and a half, and then five and a half are going to be your three sizes. I went ahead and added it to the chat one more time all together, just so it's easier to find too. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. The basic concept of this is fairly easy. Mostly, we're going to be wrapping yarn around the cord. Um, there is a little bit of a trick to it. You want to, you'll kind of get the hang of it when you do your first one, I think. Um, so I am going to zoom this in just a little bit. So hopefully it will help you all to see. So what you're going to do to get started, this is the best way I found, is you're going to lay your rope kind of across your yarn. And then you're just going to tie it in a single knot. 
So let's see here. I would recommend a fairly small tail, whatever, whatever is comfortable for you to tie. So that was pretty comfortable for me. I wasn't like straining to get my knot. And then what you're going to do, I'm right-handed, so I am going to kind of be holding it um, in a way that makes sense for me. If you're left-handed, I think it will probably make sense to switch what I'm doing around. But I like to tie it just about an inch from the bottom. So you can see, I guess I'm a little closer to an inch and a half here, inch and a quarter, just about. And if you tie it up too far or too low, loosen the knot and just move it down the rope. Um, I'm happy with where mine's at, so I'm going to leave it. And then what I'm going to do is take my left hand and hold the tail. And then I'm going to start wrapping the yarn. Kind of hold it. The way that I works for me is I kind of hold the hold my finger, my left hand as a guide. And I'm kind of holding pretty tight and I'm wrapping fairly tight here. It's kind of hard to show on camera because it's, you know, it's, it's a pretty small thing. So hopefully y'all can see what I'm doing. Laura, just to confirm, this is your shortest inside piece, right? This is my shortest. Okay. I find it easiest to start with the shortest and you'll kind of see why. Um, you'll kind of see why once we've wrapped the first two, but Truly, you, you could wrap it in whatever order works for you. This is just what works best for me. So you can see I'm just wrapping and you want to kind of wrap it right snug up to the up to the previous wrapped one. You can see I kind of like, let me see if I can focus this a little better. Doesn't really do too much, but you can, if you if you have a little space that you can see, you can move these down. So if you didn't get them tight enough and you can kind of see some of the rope through, move it down. And then once you hit a certain point, I switch my hands because then it becomes more comfortable to um, start wrapping the other way. And I will say, if you have some carpal tunnel or any kind of wrist issues, if you, if you need to take a break from doing this, it can be kind of a strain. I sometimes get a little carpal tunnel. You can set it down. It's not going to unravel. It might loosen the first or the last couple a little bit. Not going to be a big deal. When you pick it up, you can kind of tighten it back up. You can get you can get wrapping pretty fast. So you can see, I feel like I've got a pretty good rhythm with this. Any questions coming through? Because I'm kind of at a dead zone here. I'm just wrapping. I think everyone else is wrapping along <laughs> with you. <laughs> I had mistakenly left my chat settings to host and panelist only. So everyone's oh. like, what are the settings? And I'm like, oh, great. Rachel. Oh. <laughs> so they're in there now so everyone can see. I imagine they're all working to catch up there and get, get caught to where you are. But no worries. So far, so good. So if you're wrapping and you want to pause and kind of see how to close off, um, I would encourage you to do that. So you want to kind of wrap it down to about the same point as where you started. So I'm actually going to go to about here. And to close out, I don't want to put a knot because I don't want to see the knot. And here I can kind of see it. If you can tell, here's what I would say is maybe the front. And I'm going to call this the back because I can see the knot. That's getting a little nitpicky, but you're going to have to have a back, so it might as well be the side with the knot. And then the best way I found to hot glue, I'm going to check and see if my glue gun's ready. If you haven't used one before, you can feel the it starts to get warm. And usually you can do just a little test. I think I'm going to zoom out a little bit again. And you should see the glue kind of come out the top like that. If your glue isn't super liquidy and it's a little bit more, um, I don't know, it feels like it's a little harder to come through the glue gun. It's probably not heating up enough. I'm going to, this is sad, but I gave you these, we gave you these beautiful business cards that you can take that have some of our great resources. You know what? They also work great to wipe your glue gun on if you need to. 
which is how I'm going to use mine today. If you haven't checked out Creative Bug, you should. It's got tons of craft tutorials on there. Urbana Library and Champagne Library have access to it, so you can use it pretty much if you're anywhere in the Champaign-Urbana area. Um, so now I know my glue gun's ready. So also, thing to note about a glue gun, I apologize if I'm going into too much detail and you guys are like, yeah, we get it. We, we're crafters. We know how to use a glue gun. But once your glue gun uh, glue stick gets to about here, your glue gun is going to struggle to push the glue through. You've got to have another one loaded in to give it the um, leverage, I suppose. I don't know if that's the right word, but to actually push the glue through the gun. So if your glue gun isn't working, try loading another glue stick in it. And people are like, get to it, get to it. Go ahead and get gluing. No, okay. we've got actually one person has just said they appreciate all the guidance. So. Good. <laughs> okay, good. I know I, I like to, I, I know a lot of people joining, you know, do like to make things, but I don't like to assume everyone is like, you know, an expert on things because otherwise, you know, why are you taking the class, right? So, okay. What I like to do, if you don't feel comfortable and you want to do a couple test dots on a scrap, please do so. That'll kind of get an idea. If I push it all the way in, I'm getting this huge dot, which is clear, so it's kind of hard to see. But if I push the push the um, trigger in just a little bit, I'm getting a really small dot. So a small dot's what you're going to be after here. We're just going to do a little bitty dot. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, so hopefully y'all can see that little dot and then what I'm going to do I'm going to hold this and I'm going to pull the yarn over and I'm just going to hold it in place. If you're brave you can tap your fingernail down here. I feel like at this point I'm like immune to getting hot glue gun burns because I use them so much but you know what I'm told that's not really how it works. So it will cool off to be able to touch it fairly soon um, for this, probably this first round, but as the glue gun heats up more, I would give it a little more time before you touch it because it will get pretty hot. So you can see I've got my little dab of glue and I'm stuck. So now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna trim just the edge of this here. And you flip it over and Voila, you can't even see that we have any glue on the back of there. So that was our first rainbow arc here. It's looking pretty good. I'm happy with how that one turned out. What's really handy about this is if you don't like it, um, it's actually not that hard. I'm not gonna demonstrate with this one, but you could cut this right here with your scissors and unwrap it and redo it. So you've got, uh, these are very forgiving as far as crafts go. Not all crafting is that way. So that's nice. So that's our first one. I'm gonna move on to my second one. Um, so we're gonna be repeating. So if you think of any questions along the way, um, please ask. We did have one person um, ask how you had started the rope before you um, began wrapping, how you started your yarn and got it in place. Yeah. So if you could just show that again in Ooh, detail sure so she can. can see that. Okay, so my second color I'm gonna do is blue. So again, gosh, I keep trying to grab the largest one. So again, what you're gonna do is start wrapping about at the same location as your first one. And to do that, I just kind of lay my yarn, sorry, out this way. And then I'm going to tie it in a single knot. I'll try to move my hand out of the way in a second. Tie it in a single knot. And again, I'm just going to test my test and see pretty close. I'm going to call that pretty perfect. So that's good enough. Tie it. And then what you're going to do when you start wrapping to hide the tail is you're going to pull on that tail while you wrap and we're gonna wrap over the tail and the yarn. All right, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit now because I don't think you need to see quite so close here. And again, you're just gonna wrap. I noticed the blue, the blue yarn, I think the reason it's so stunning is because it has a little bit of a sheen to it. And for some reason, 
I feel like I can see a little more of the rope through it. So I have to be a little bit more methodical when I'm wrapping. So you wouldn't know that unless you used it before, but you'll kind of notice some of these yarns do have a little bit of a different texture. So they'll wrap just a little bit differently. But again, we're just wrapping. And that sheen, it's coming through even on the screen. It's really pretty. I know. It's like, I think it's kind of gorgeous. I mean, that's one of my favorite shades of blue anyway, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it already had uh, that going for it. Had that it. going for it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So you'll kind of notice when it feels like you want to switch hands. For me, it's like about a third of the way through. I switch to the other side because I'm just in a good groove and it just it wraps so nicely. Laura, where did you get this yarn? Somebody would like to know. Sure, I would be happy to tell you. Um, all the yarn and the rope both came from Michaels. So you can, I don't, I'm sorry to say I don't have the, well, I, no, I'm sorry. I don't have the wrapper anymore. I think I got rid of all of those when we opened it. But we got it recently, so you can still find it there if you'd like to get some. Again, wrapping. I like this project too because I pretty much say this in any class that I teach and most people know it about me. I love secondhand stuff and I love, um, I love finding secondhand craft supplies. So what I like about this is if you are a yarn crafter in any way, you know how many little skeins of yarn you have that are like, well, I really like this yarn and it was expensive and nice, but what do I do with it? I don't want to throw it away. A, pro a project like this is kind of perfect for scraps. So I feel like I'm about ready, but I'm going to test it here. You'll notice once you start wrapping it, your like floppy yarn becomes a lot sturdier, which is kind of fun. I think I want to do a couple more. I can't even really see the back of this one. For some reason I don't like, I think I wrapped it twice here and you can kind of see it's sticking up a little bit. So I think I'm going to make this the back of this one just because I don't want to see that. And again, if you didn't watch before, for our glue here, we're going to do just a little dab. You really don't need much. In fact, I wouldn't recommend doing a lot because that will kind of squeeze out the sides. And then you're going to pull your yarn into the glue and then just kind of hold it. And if you're feeling dangerous, you can get pretty close. I do have fingernails here, so I'm able to kind of get a little closer without burning my skin at all. So, but like I said, it it cools off pretty quick once it's once it's on an object. And then same thing, you're just gonna trim it, and that's that. That's our second one. Again, I'm going to kind of hold it next to it, looking so good. You can see maybe I wanted to kind of shrunk up a little bit, actually, on this one. So I'm going to think about that for my last one here, that maybe I want to wrap just slightly more, since it did shrink up a little bit. But I think I'm going to be able to manipulate it so you can't really tell. And if you wanted to, like if you were wanting to be very perfect about it, you really could just start another little, um, you could start some more yarn and wrap another couple rows. I'm not going to do it for this, but you could. So I'm going to move on to my last one. I'm going to use green. And again, we're just going to repeat the same thing. really is such a quick process once you get started. 
Yeah, I think you could make a dozen of these in a sitting if you had everything you needed. You totally could. And what's nice is you don't use that much yarn. So uh, I, I don't know if you'll believe it, but I, we got one skein of each color um, for all of your kits and we didn't even use them. Like we didn't even finish it. So you, I was a witness. Really... I can attest to that. <laughs> We're not <laughs> lying. So for this one, for my last one, this is why I chose to do my largest one last is so that I could um, kind of take a look at where the yarn was hitting here and figure out where I wanted to start my last one. So I can tell that I actually want to start it just slightly lower because it is shrinking up just a little bit. So there was a little method to the madness, so to speak. So here I'm going to tie my knot. Green is giving me difficulties. So not too much lower, just a little bit. And again, I'm going to wrap it. You can see this one. Um, just for clarity for everybody, you can see this one did start to kind of unravel. The rope did a little bit. It kind of untwisted. For a project like this, it does not matter at all. We're still going to be able to wrap it, and it's going to be just fine. You might be a little more conscious of little strings slipping through where you're wrapping, but otherwise. Laura, can you move your hands up just a bit? Oh, there yeah, you sure. go. I mean, probably everyone's had a chance to try it themselves now, but it's nice to see what you're doing. Yes, no, that is totally fine. And that green, it didn't look like it was as shiny when it was loose, but as you're wrapping it, it looks like it does have that nice oh, sheen. It also has you a little sheen. You found some good ones. Thank you. I really did have fun picking up the colors. Oh, I know. Um, I could spend so long just standing and looking at all of the options. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was trying to pick, like I said, like I don't, I wanted to try to find something that in my eyes was like a little more artful and less um, maybe like kid like or nothing wrong with that either um, at all. That's what I like about this. You could make so many different varieties, but for this particular project, I was like, mm, I want these to be a little bit more sophisticated. I will say too, we have a comment. It looks like Deanna is impressed that you are doing this with your long nails too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Haven't always been a long nails person. Um, in fact, I struggle to grow long nails. I, um, I think partially because I am like a, a maker, so I would always break them and they'd always just look junky. So I actually started getting some like nail extensions. So they're long and they're pretty and they're strong and they don't break. And it actually has been handy to have them instead of a burden. So if anyone's thinking about it, I also hear it's great if you play guitar because you don't always have to have a guitar pick. So Good stuff. You know, I usually, yeah, the long nail, like you said, you can use it for dabbing your hot glue. You can yeah. use it to crease folds in paper. Yes. <laughs> Creasing <laughs> folds is like, I also do like a lot of sewing. And if you don't have an iron, you can use uh, your fingernail to crease something and fold it pretty much. I'm pretty similarly to ironing it. And I use that a lot. It's so satisfying. Okay, this one feels like I'm dragging a little bit. I'm hopeful that everyone has enough yarn to do the longest, um, the longest rope, something that I kind of didn't anticipate just for some fun behind the scenes. Um, I didn't anticipate like, oh yeah, we're going to make these. It's a pretty easy craft project, right? Well, the making the kits was actually kind of a lot of math. And a lot of trying to figure out how much of each of these objects to give everyone so that they had enough to make what we were supposed to make. And I think that's something you don't always think about when you attend classes like this. Like, whew, we really, you should have seen Rachel and I prepping our kits. We had some fun. Long strands of yarn draped over 
surfaces that were tall enough. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to keep the colors separate until we were ready to put them in the kits. <laughs> yes. And I don't know if Jan is here, uh, but shout out to one of our wonderful library volunteers, Jan. She comes in and helps us actually prep all your crafty adults kits every month. And uh, she's wonderful. So if Jan's here, we thank you every month. Yes. And thank you, Jan. If she's not here, I hope she watches this later. And here's a lovely shout out. Okay. So Here's where I am going to pause and kind of look at my yarn here. I, I overestimated, I think, this one a little bit. But before I finish, I do want to make sure all my colors are at least close. So I am just kind of kind of plus play around here. So this one I did go a little too long. So I'm going to unwrap that one a little bit and bring it. See how I'm just kind of like moving it around? And maybe I will show you, because I am being a little bit of a perfectionist about this, I might wrap just like another quarter of an inch of the blue just so it ends really nicely. And I think I will show you that just in case you're having a similar issue to me so you can see that. We've obviously got plenty of time in this workshop tonight because we're wrapping up our project here. So I'm going to remove a few of those. I'm going to come back to the blue for a moment and I'm going to add some blue back on here. So if you are having a similar thing to me and you would like to watch how you can add some more to one that you've already finished, you can tune in now. And if you don't, just keep on wrapping what you're wrapping. What you're wrapping. I'm actually going to add it to the side that already has glue. So I'm going to be adding it to this side. So instead of tying a knot, I'm just going to add this one with some glue. Do my little glue stop. And then I'm going to hold this here. You see, I was pretty brave. I went right in there. I'm going to trim it. And then I'm just going to wrap it a couple more times here. So again, what I'm doing here is adding just another quarter of an inch or so. And I think that's going to do it. I think that's going to look a lot nicer. So now I'll take my glue gun, put another little dot. All right. <laughs> Thank you for noticing uh, wrapping up, Miranda. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. And I like to hold it on there just to like press it in a little bit once it's not too hot to handle. Okay, so now let me take a look and see how we are. How we are. If you notice the glue gun will, if you've never used one before, a lot of times you will get these like little strings um, and you can just, they look like a little spider web, kind of. And you can just peel those off. Oh my gosh, that's so much better. That makes me so much happier. Okay. It's very satisfying. Yeah. How nice it lines up. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to come back to this one. Kind of, You can kind of see how I'm just holding it. And I'm pretty happy with that. I think I'm going to glue this one, the green one, down now. So what I'm going to do... Put a little dab of glue. Whoops. Kind of catch it in the glue there. There we go. So um, I'm pretty much ready now for one of our um, 
we've got a couple more steps. Um, so is everyone kind of ready to move on from the wrapping or would you like to hang out for another couple minutes and finish up before I move on? I will leave it in your hands. I'm giving folks a second to respond in the we chat. We've got to um, hang out, more time. Yep, looks like on. two to <laughs> one waiting, wanting to wait a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I know when I asked, I was like, I'm going to get both both replies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I let, we'll hang out for a couple minutes while I kind of clean off my area and get ready for the next thing. It looks clean. What you guys see, what I see is some stuff everywhere which I won't show you. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of wrap up my stuff here, my yarn, because maybe I can use this for something else. So the next thing that we'll be doing, just to talk you guys through what it will be, is we're gonna be putting together our keychains. We're gonna cut out our rainbow template and um, we're gonna get ready to assemble everything. So if you are ready to move on, what you can do now is actually assemble your keychain here. Got hot glue all over me. So to do that, again, the nail works nice. You open up the keychain and you'll add this one. Rachel, what would you call this? Is this like a keychain? I would probably or? just call it a clip just to a make clip. A clip. things Thank easy. You. Yeah. I couldn't think of the word clip. So you're gonna put the clip in the keychain, the key ring, there we go. And voila. These may be a little stiff, so you might have to adjust the lever a couple times, but. Oops, sorry, I'm meaning to go out here. Oh, if you wanted to get crazy, I suppose you could do gold and silver together and mix it up. That'd be kind of fun. Mixed metals. I right? feel like it was a big trend not too long ago. Yeah, I know, right? Okay, so I got my keychains. I've got my... Um, oh my gosh, I'm losing words. It's that time in the evening. <laughs> Jump rings. Jump rings. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start cutting out the template here. So if you have fabric scissors, don't use those on this paper. You can just use a pair of regular scissors. And this is a template. It is not the, you know, the rules here. This is just a guide. So your rainbow, I like mine's gonna be a little bit different than this. I can just tell. It, it's just going to be a little different. Um, but the most important thing that I would recommend is take a look at where you're at. Look at how you'd like your rainbow. Do you want to have a lot of space? Do you want it to be longer and thinner and like a little closer together? Like I kind of like where that one's at. I mean, they're not lined up right now, but you can kind of see what I mean here. So just looking at it, I'm probably going to want this arc to be up just a little higher so you don't see it through. Um, that's where if you make a smaller one like this and you want it to be compact, you don't really have to worry about the about the little arc in the middle. Now I'm going to do that today, so I'm going to just eyeball it. And you can kind of see close enough, close enough for me today we'll have the opportunity to kind of edit it. So don't get too hung up on it being perfect. And then if you want to trace it, you could trace the shape onto the felt. Um, I don't want to take the time to do that. And I feel confident that I can hold the two together and cut it at the same time, um, which is what I'm saying now. So we'll see what it looks like when I'm done here. And now I'm just gonna cut along the felt here. I'm sorry, I went out of frame. Hopefully you guys know about cutting though. Okay. 
Um, any questions so far? So far, so good, I think. Oh, here is a question, though. I was just thinking about this, too. Um, are, is there enough of the felt for two backs? I don't oh. know that there is. We didn't think about that. What? <laughs> what a great point. I know. I was just, as I watched you laying the template down, I was like, hmm, I don't think there's enough for two there. What? Not An two absolutely pieces, wonderful anyway. point. Well, this will be great to show you, too. Um, I don't have any pre-made, but if you'd like to do your second one, dang, I think this is one of the first times in doing all of these classes that we have, like, 100% forgot, like, a supply, which we didn't forget it, but we didn't include enough to make right, there what we hoped. For two, yeah. And that's my bad. Um, so... Let me tell you what you can do for your second one if you don't have any felt at home. You can also use fabric. Um, <laughs> it's just all someone said in the chat. Right. <laughs> oh, like man. anyone who's crafted has probably been there. Yeah. Oh, I have enough of everything. Oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's going to, I'm going to be cracking up about that. Um, okay. So what you could do if you don't want to use the felt or you don't have the felt, um, because the people who you got the kit from didn't provide it for you. Um, what you could do <laughs> <laughs> is actually just hot glue. Like you could just glue these together. It's a little harder to do. And you have a little less control over how your rainbow is shaped because you're kind of, um, you're kind of trusting, you have to trust that the cord is going to shape itself how it wants to, unless you want to do your rainbow like this, which I think would be cute too, if you wanted to just glue it together completely. It's just probably not going to work for one this long. I think you'd want to do it for one that was a little smaller like this. Um, I just think it looks a little cuter. This looks a little funky just with the three like this. So anyway, um, or you could use um, fabric. So any kind of fabric scrap uh, scrap will work. The felt is just honestly the easiest to cut because you don't have to worry about it fraying. So anyway, for the first one, you do have felt. So we're gonna we're gonna go with that. And again, I'm just going to kind of line up my rainbow, kind of make sure it looks how I want it. I like to zhuzh a little bit before I glue, just to kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like. So when you're gluing, I would start with the center and then work your way out. Um, that way, if you need to trim, which you most likely will, um, you can do that with a little bit more ease. It's going to be easier to trim around this side than it is going to be to trim around the inside of the arc. So if you need to do any adjusting before you, you glue, now is the time to do it. When we glue, starting with the first one, I'm just going to start. You want the edge of where your yarn is where, or um, where your color is to hit the bottom of the template. I'm going to be a little off here. You can see that's okay. It's totally fine. Um, so what I'm going to do is just start with my glue here and do some smaller beads here. And I'm going to go a little bit at a time, not do the whole thing at once. I'm going to make sure I'm doing the back side, not the front. I'm going to put down my first um, piece. You can't see... I can see, but you can't. I am kind of getting a little glue on the table. So if you're working with a surface that um, hot glue is easy to get off, it's just plastic. So, you know, I can just kind of remove it that way once it's cooled. But just keep that in mind. If you're working on a surface, you'd rather not get glue on. And hot glue can be a little bit messy and a little frustrating with all the little um, like spider webby bits. So I do try to be slow and go be careful with it. Again, just kind of pressing down. You can see my glue coming out the top there. 
and I'm going to actually pull this up a little bit. I think instead for mine, since I the arc is a little different than how I want it, I'm going to do the bottom part here before I do the middle. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm actually not going to glue the top arc here yet. I'm going to save that for my second piece. And then I'm just going to press it down. Looks pretty good. Not so bad. I think it's going to be a slightly different shape than I wanted. Like I wanted it to come in a little bit more, but again, that's where your template comes in handy. You can kind of manipulate the shape. I like where that's at. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start at the bottom. And I'm actually going to do both of the bottom corners this time just to get it right where I want it. And I think I saw someone ask what got me into crafting. I have been like making stuff my whole life. Um, which maybe people say a lot, but I truly have. My dad is a carpenter, and I remember from a very young age, like, making wood, wood sculptures out of his scraps and hot gluing things together. And my mom was really into sewing when I was younger, so she taught me how to sew, and that kind of got me into crafting. And then I just, I was, like, addicted ever since. Um, and art in general, I went to art school and it's a uh, it's like the only thing in my life that always makes sense so I wish there was like a an exact thing but it's just something I've done forever and so I'm really happy to be able to teach some crafting classes here at the library because I just I I feel it so much and I love to be able to share it with other people well, and it's fun too how many just how many different activities you've come up with for this series <laughs> since know, you've been running we're gonna it. So. Have to repeat <laughs> some soon, I think. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Rachel's gonna be teaching a class coming up as well. So I'm super excited for that. Because Rachel is also a maker. Um, Rachel's it's a true. painter. Um I, yeah. And I'm, I'm kind of like you. I've tried a little bit of everything because I don't, I enjoy painting primarily, but sometimes you just want to try something else. Yeah. Well, and painting is a different mind, for me, a different mindset than crafting somehow. Like it takes a different type of focus for sure. Yeah. Like it is crafting, like, but you're, and you do watercolor, which I think is. I think of watercolor more as a fine art. Well, I feel fancy then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So my last one here. Glue it down. And I think, I don't know if you noticed, I didn't quite glue the tops of the arcs in yet because I wanted to wait for that. Then now I've kind of got a little bit of a flat base here, so I am just gonna flip it over and glue it that way. Kind of press down. So you can kind of see, that's why I zoomed in. You can see all of these little bits and bobs. That's the glue and little fuzzy things getting stuck to it so you kind of have to clean it up a little bit sometimes you move your yarn around a little bit to cover up little spaces so that's looking pretty good so far and I did the thing I told myself not to do so let's go ahead and attach our keychain. I intended to do that first and I told myself, do the keychain before you do the glue, do the keychain before you do the glue. And I did not. So if you haven't, if you haven't glued the top of your arc down, um, 
I would pause and, and not continue gluing because it's going to be a little easier to do the jump ring first. Um, but if you have, like me, I will show you how to correct that little mistake. Jump rings. Um, I'm going to show you, if you haven't worked with a jump ring before, the correct way to open it. Um, a lot of people will pull it out. So pull the two sides out. That'll help it focus a little better. Not really. Yeah. I'm not really focusing on the jump ring, but that's okay. So it's, you don't want to pull it apart. I feel like that's a common thing people do. Um, but really, all you have to do, and these jump rings are pretty easy to manipulate, is hold one side, take your pliers, and then just pull and open it this way. This is the right way to open a jump ring so that when you close it, it maintains its circular shape. If you open it this way, it's pretty much impossible to get it back into a nice little circle. Um, so for anybody curious, that's the right way to open a jump ring. What I intended to do um, here, it's easier if you um, put the jump ring on through just over the um, over the rope. It's easier just to connect it over the rope, but now I'm going to have to go through the felt. So you can see how that was just a slight mistake. And I can kind of feel it on the other end. So what I'm going to do is kind of help my felt or help my jump ring out. And I'm going to put just a little tiny hole on the back just with my scissors. There I went, right through, no problem. So that's what you can do if you've already glued down per what your instructor told you to do. And that's gonna make it much easier. Okay, so before we actually attach the jump ring though, now we're going to go ahead and just trim the felt all along the top of the rainbow arc. Easiest way to do that is just be careful. If you cut your yarn, you're going to, I mean, it is, it's not going to ruin it, but you will start to have some little flyaways here. So you want to be careful when you're cutting. You want to cut just close enough that you can get right up to the edge, but not so close that you're cutting the yarn. So just be careful. You can always cut more off, but you can't put any back. See how close I'm getting here. Any questions right now, since I kind of have given a little bit of confusing instructions? Do this, don't do that, do this, don't do that. There is one question that just came in. It says, sure. any suggestion to fix um, if you glue your rainbow strands a little too far apart and you can see the yellow backing peeking through? They're asking you... for a friend. They want to clarify that. <laughs> Yes, um, I believe what you could do now, normally, if you had more felt, um, I would say you could carefully just cut in between and take them off. I kind of feel the same. I have like a slightly more room than I'd like, but that's okay. It's, it's just a keychain. It's going to be fine. Um, the other thing you could try, let me see here. This is pretty stuck for me. I was going to say you could try to peel it off, which I, I, you may have some success doing. Uh, it's pretty stuck on there for me. Um, the other thing you could do, see if you can manipulate it at all. See, like if I hold mine pretty close, I can kind of manipulate not seeing that space. And you could try to put just a little dab of glue in there and then hold it really close. You are going to probably have to clean it up a little bit more because you'll have some of those glue globs flying around. Um, but cu honestly, cutting it in between and just redoing it would be the easy, the, the best way probably. It's just that we didn't give you enough felt to make another one. So someone <laughs> else had suggested maybe laying some extra yarn in between yeah do you think that would work you could for sure um it's gonna look a little bit different but you could 
totally kind of drop a little bit of yarn in that little crease. It's going to change the look a little bit, but it's just, it's going to be your own creation that it's going to be your kind of added flair to it. Um, so you, you could totally do that. Again, with your glue, you just want to be careful with the glue, not to get too many globs. Um, I'm going to think on that too while I'm doing this next step on what would be the best way. So again, I'm going to make sure I have my little hole for my jump ring ready. I seem to have just flipped my jump ring somewhere. This is sad. Did it get caught in one of your yarn pieces? Yeah, I felt like I heard it just flip around and I don't have any others in. Oh, I do have some more in here. Give me just a second. If anybody has any questions, go ahead and throw them in the chat. I'm going to get another jump ring here. Oh, there's the original. Or did you open that one that fast? No, that's yeah, the original had lo relocated <laughs> to the floor. Oh. <laughs> so I found it. Anyway, it's going to be easy since you've got the hole here. You can go ahead and um, using your pliers, just kind of feed it through. And now it's around. You can see how it'd be a little easier to do that without having the felt. You could just do it around and then just glue it with the jump ring and it would still be able to move. Um, to close the jump ring, it is a little bit easier with two pairs of pliers. That's like the professional way to do it. But what you can do is actually just squeeze it now this way. And we're gonna get it nice and as flat as we can. There is still a little opening here that we're gonna address. And we're gonna address it by just squeezing together. A Little hard to see in the camera, but it's a little off and I wanna fix that. So I'm just gonna squeeze it again. Again, if you have two pairs of pliers, that's how jewelers will do things because you can get it perfect. You've got a little leverage, but that wasn't so bad with my finger. There's my jump ring. And for your keychain, super easy. All you're going to do is open up the key ring. It up on this side, actually. And you're going to feed your jump ring through it. I find it easier to do this versus you could just put the key ring in the jump ring before you close it. But I find it a little bit easier to do it without having to mess with the extra hardware on the ring. And we're just about done. Again, I'm a little, the flaws are showing up a little more on camera, to be honest, than they are in real life. But last thing you're going to do, lay your keychain out. We want to trim up the bottom so it's nice and even. So you're just going to kind of mark what your shortest one is and just, you're just going to trim it up to kind of match that. So I like to do it this way and just kind of hold it. It doesn't have to be perfect. These are whimsical keychains. But you can see we're getting there. I'm actually gonna flip it so it's upside down. It's gonna be a little easier for me to get the rest. That, honestly, that last little step makes it look so much more professional once it's nice and even. You can kind of move it around with your fingers and get anything that's like a flyaway out or any of the little tiny pieces. And that is my keychain. Um, we've done it. Um, you have enough to make two, so you can make another one um, if you'd like. If you have any questions, I'm happy to, Rachel and I are happy to answer your questions. Um, 
Good news too, Laura. If you didn't see the chat, it sounds like the small dab of glue between the rainbow pieces and squeezing them together actually helps hide some of that yellow space. So good suggestion. Good. I know. I kind of think I'd like to do that on mine too. It would make me so much happier if I just couldn't see this tiny little thing, which again is like a kind of insane, but it's true. From far away, you don't notice it at all. Yeah. What I like about these, the back, my back, I'd say looks Eh, it's not my favorite. Um, it could look a little nicer, um, but depending on where you're hanging it, you may or may not see the back. I have been hanging mine on my, actually my library badge um, for the last couple months, so I'm probably going to add this one to my library badge now, just as a little flare to my work necklace. But yeah, you can see, you know, I've messed around with these a little bit. I've made some different versions and tried some different things out. So um, you can do lots of things with lots of things with these. And you can see like these are all, um, you know, I made all of these with the same tutorial for the most part. I was kind of messing around trying to get, get it how I'd like it. But you can make lots of different versions. So it's kind of a, it's a fun thing. I think this would be fun too if you have teens. Um, I honestly think teen teenagers would get into this, especially just with being able to customize it and how relatively easy it is. I think it'd be a fun craft for, for kids or teens too. You should suggest it to the teen team. I bet they I would like sure it. I sure might have to. So at this point, um, I feel like we're, oh, <laughs> your 11 year old did it with you. I love that. Yeah, I feel like this is this is a craft for many different age groups. So um, at this point, we're, we're pretty much, I mean, we're done with our craft for tonight, but um, we, we would love if you uh, wanted to share your project, you could. Um, we'd be happy to, uh, basically what we'll do is add you as one of our, um, webinar panelists and we can turn your camera on and you could show us your project if you wanted. Um, no pressure, you don't have to, of course, but if you wanted to, just let us know in the chat that you'd like to and we'll turn your camera on for everybody. Um, there was so, a question that rolled in. Um, is yeah. the one inch difference from between each length, is that kind of the rule of thumb? Is there someone saying if they wanted to add a bigger loop, would they just increase that by one inch or? Honestly, no. I think once you get bigger, you probably want a little longer. Let me let me try something here real quick. I think so. I'm just gonna measure this one. It, it starts to get a little bit. So I would want to do it a little longer than this, just to give the wiggle room for the trimming. And that is. For me, that took me all the way up to eight and a half, almost nine inches. So these measurements would be good for the first three and then anything after that. I would just measure around. Yeah, this was about eight and a half, almost nine. So that is, it was a little bit more than an inch. So maybe about an inch and a quarter. I recommend just testing it that way if you want to add more. This project you could do too with larger scale rope and make an actual like large wall hanging too. It would obviously take more time, but the same concept. And there was another comment, a 10 year old um, joined us as well and also loved doing it. So Yay! I think we've already got all ages, which is fun. I'm so excited by that. Um, so far, no takers that I could see on wanting to share their project. No worries. Um, no worries. Yeah, no pressure at all. Totally up to you. I feel like some classes we get a bunch of people and like we can barely get to them before we have to go. And sometimes people are like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> it looks like <laughs> this. <laughs> cool. Well, anybody, um, we'll probably, normally we go till 830, but we'll probably wrap up a little early unless you want to hear Rachel and I talk for 20 minutes and probably people <laughs> we have We could probably better, talk crafts for we that probably long. Could. <laughs> People probably have better things to do with their time than listen to us chat, but I don't know. Anyway, if you have any questions, I would say now's the time to drop them in here. Um, if you have any comments or 
anything else you want to share or you want to share your project with the rest of us um now's the time but otherwise we're probably going to wrap up in a few oh here's one for me can i tell us what class we're teaching it you is sure not can. a secret i'm actually really excited about this because it we're we're planning to go back to in person in may um, and i will be teaching how to do a sort of simple hand-bound book. I'm calling them scrapbook journals. And um, yeah, we'll use a pretty simple sewing technique to bind some pages together into a blank journal. Yes. And I was going to see, I don't have the, I was going to try to find the picture handy real quick to show people what we mean. And I I think I can find it if, give me just a second. Sure, I will say, so that is in May. So we do have one in between for April, which I'll just tell you about right now. Yeah. Um, Laura's gonna lead us again in making, it is you, right, Laura? You're yes. gonna do this? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, in making geometric jewelry. So she's got some samples on her desk already. They're fun. I think you're using like wood pieces and some acrylic paint, yeah. is that right? And putting together yeah. some fun jewelry. Yeah, I should have grabbed one. Um, let me, I'm going to come back here as, whoops, yeah, I'll go ahead and as myself and not my workstation. And then if anyone seems like we don't really have questions about our there we go. process, I'm sorry, I keep doing weird stuff on the camera. <laughs> okay. I'm back here though. Yeah. For the geometric jewelry, I don't have any, um, handy to show you but just to give you an idea in case you're interested in joining um i am going to be showing you how to make jewelry out of some little like they're like little craft shapes like you can find them in the kids section actually of a lot of craft stores and i want to show you how to turn those into some jewelry that you can wear so you can see a picture actually in the events which let me just share my screen and you can see that and then I'll quickly show you a picture of the bookmaking. Um, you'll get a little sneak peek there and um, then I think we'll probably wrap up for the evening since we're pretty close to the end. Yeah. And please don't count how many times I've now said wrap up because I think it got out of control. <laughs> this pun has gone far it enough. Gone <laughs> way too far. Okay let me see if I can share this with you all. Um, so this is the geometric jewelry one. So you can kind of see in the picture here, it's small, um, but you can see I've taken some wood shapes, painted them and attached them together to create, um, these are earrings, but you can attach them to make like a pendant or uh, something on a necklace. You can kind of get creative with it. Um, I specifically chose earrings because they're easy um and we're not going to get into like how to make a necklace and stuff in this class but that's this one and then rachel's let me i have an image to save here real quick while she's doing that i'll just mention the geometric jewelry I, it probably says right on the screen but that's going to be on wednesday april 13th and you yes. can start signing up for that one at 9 a.m. on Friday, April 1st. Yes. So you'll go ahead and register on the website. Or you can give us a call and we can do that too for you. We sure can. Okay. And here you should see this is our, this is like a big image you can see. So this is some of the journals um, that Rachel has made. So this give you a little idea of what we're going to be doing in May. And like she said, it's going to be... Um, cross your fingers in person um, so we're very excited about that we've loved doing these webinars with you guys um it's been uh, a learning experience and it's been really fun but we are looking forward to being able to all meet together and actually craft together i think crafting together is a really fun thing to do so we won't be able to work with as many people doing the in-person as we have we've been able to work with people all over um, the state uh, for some of these classes, even uh, people who are in different states. So, you know, we'll we'll kind of lose that piece, but we're going to gain some some social time. Yes, some in-person socialization yeah. again, which I know yeah. at least a few people have mentioned that they missed. So yeah, so we it'll have just be too. different. <laughs> it'll just be different, and we'll we'll we're looking forward to it. So I'm going to stop sharing this here and come back. 
All right. Anybody? I feel like everybody, we didn't really get any more questions that came through. So um, I feel like we're set to end a little early this evening. We did get some comments about how fun it was. We had someone joining us for the first time for Crafty Adults tonight. Yay! So thank you, Gina, for joining us. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, and we're so happy. So happy. And and like she said at the beginning, like Rachel said, Crafty Adults is, um, it's usually just about every month. Um, we do skip a few months here and there just because we need to. Um, but for the most part, it's every month. Um, you always can sign up on the first of the month. Um, and we do it that way just because it is pretty popular. So we try to make it, um, yeah, it's kind of crazy sometimes. Um, but we just, we try to make it the same time. So everyone has an equal opportunity to join um, and get in on the fun. So thank you all for coming tonight. Um, I don't think I have any anything specific closing wise for this webinar other than um, check out the next Crafty Adults. You can also check out, we've got other workshops that going on that are, um, I would say more on the creative side. We do uh, writer's workshops, which are creative and fun. And those are also on Wednesdays. So on Wednesdays where you don't come craft, you can um, come here and learn a little bit about writing and they do different topics every week. So that one is fun. Um, we also have business programs, of course, and career. We've got lots of different events going on. So you should check our calendar if you want to see some more updated library happenings. But Otherwise, I think we'll see you next time. And thank you so much for joining us this evening. Yes, thank you, everyone. Have a good evening, and hopefully we'll see you next time. Oh, yep. Another comment snuck in here. This was her last, her first class as well. Woohoo! So thanks for joining us, and hopefully we'll see yeah. you again soon. Yep. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Good night, everyone.